it's just going to start recording now. Yep. Uh, come on, recording thing. Please work for me. Ah, it is recording. It is working. Hello and welcome to the latest in the series of CBAA webinars brought to you with the assistance of the Community Media Training Organisation. Uh, before we get started, our uh, webinars are broadcast on Gadigal land and as such we pay respects to the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation paying respect to elders past, present and emerging, acknowledging their serenity was never ceded. Uh, before we get started on tonight's webinar, uh, we've got the old bit of self-promotion up there. The 2019 CBAA conference dates and location have been announced. It's a little bit earlier this year, the 24th to the 27th of October 2019 at the Pullman on the Park, Melbourne. That's a different Pullman to the Pullman where we've had the um, conferences at previously. And I bring that up, uh, specific features and documentary series. It's back again. Uh, returns in 2019, giving community radio broadcasters the opportunity to make a radio feature for national distribution and also to receive mentoring from experienced producers as well as get paid for its work. Now, the NFDS has established itself as one of the leading showcases of uh, work from new and emerging Australian community broadcasters. And it's got the involvement of broadcasters across the country uh, covering subjects that won't be heard anywhere else. And it's a really wonderful thing. How many years has the NFDS been going for now? Um, I'm asking that question of us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it would be, I'm, a, and I'm hoping the bandwidth to a halt. It can't handle it. It can't handle the format. All right, stop the video now. While you do that, Katharina, if it's all right, I might ask you a couple. Jane and Barbara are vision impaired, and with the help, they started to run. So um, they are talking about severe depressions and to get back. And this documentary is about two women, Jane and Barbara, find the... Because as part of putting that piece together, you sort of had to do interviews and take the recorder on the jogging. Thinking in, in scenes and what they would went out with them on a run. I went to a blindfolding workshop for guides where, well, for, of the guide... And when you think about sort of your initial life... In hindsight, I would a little bit more about how I would trend the sound of the, the dog up. It would be great to put things in that you can imagine what it will sound like afterwards, after you produced it. What are you keen... What, what, what keeps you listening when you're listening to a good radio documentary? What kind of sounds make you think, oh, that's... That's great. Oh, what's that? Oh, there's somebody running from left to the right, or there's a bike passing, and um, which grabs your attention. And would you say that the involvement of the National Features and Documentary Series sort of enhanced the project to a tangible level more so than it would have been if you had to do it by yourself? Yes, for sure. Um, I, I enjoyed working with Kim, my mentor. She helped me um, very much to keep me on track and not to get lost on any other side things I was thinking about. Or And um, with the help of Jordana and Andrew, who had a really good listen to it and um, gave me some ideas to shuffle things around, what I could do. And that was a, was a great process for me to learn from all of them and to still stand up for my <laughs> my <laughs> opinion sometimes Andrew <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah so it was was really a great learning experience because normally if you do community radio you're pretty much at least that's how it is in my language group you you work by yourself you you don't get any feedback you don't cooperate so much with other people. So it was just a wonderful opportunity for me to talk to all the experienced um, pr radio producers and just get this story to the best it could be. And it looks like a, a, from an audio editing point of view, because the image there in the bottom corner of you with the thumbs up, the computer there in the background, uh, it's got the Hindenburg audio editing program there. Lots of tracks there, so it's kind of detailed. Um, I'm assuming it was sort of the project was one of those ones that was a real baptism of fire with uh, <laughs> learning how to deal with audio editing. Yeah, it was, but um, I got to know Hindenburg shortly before I applied for this series um, at the CBAA conference in 2017 in November, and I loved it from the beginning because it was quite clear, it was very visual, and you could literally change things around in an instant and that's how I like to work and I could sort everything you can see on the right hand side the clipboard it says group one group two group three group four and I could sort my interviews my sound effects my music 
um, any other recordings I had to really, um, yeah, change things around and, and, and play with it and, and get to listen to it really, really closely. And it was, I, I don't think that I could have edited this, this long series because it was a lot of material at the beginning, which you had to narrow down to the nearly 30 minutes at the end. So um, I love working with Hindenburg. Awesome. And, and uh, I understand sort of it's uh, opened up some new opportunities for you being involved in the 2018 NFDS. Oh, yes. Yes. O only great things came out of it for me. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> it's, um, I think it's, a, it's an opportunity. It was, first, it was a great opportunity for me to give Barbara, Jane and Birg a voice and um, to, to really push their message forward because it's a good cause to get get um, vision impaired people into running and um, for example parents of an eight-year-old boy listen to it and they say no, no, no. but because they they heard this documentary they got their son in contact with Achilles and he's running now park runs every Saturday with our group oh, and, wow. um, on, yeah on a personal <laughs> level they, they made me a guide and I'm not a runner so um, but I'm I'm still with this little group. It's um, yeah, a little group of friends meanwhile. And I'm very happy that I met him and that I could still tell their stories and that I, I'm, I'm now part of this group and um, I'm going <laughs> on a run now from time to time. <laughs> so that was on a personal level, but um, um, I, it, it even got me a job. So um, a guy, um, from America, Evo, Evo Terra, a great podcasting guy there. He, he posted on Facebook in the Hindenburg forum and said, well, are there any people familiar with Hindenburg who could, who could help me out editing? And I said, um, yeah, me, me, I, I can do that. Have a listen to the runner's guide. That's the kind of editing I can do. And I'm, I'm familiar with, and I like, and um, he had a listen to it and he said, oh, that's great. Let's do this. So um, I'm a freelancer for him now. Wow, that's and really amazing. Four or five pod podcasts per week for him. Yeah. Okay, then. Well, um, yeah. that's obviously really good that these opportunities come up, but there's a warning yes. to everyone that the NFDS might lead to exercise. It does. And um, for me, it was the first piece I produced in English because I'm working for the German language group normally at Radio 4EB. So now I have something uh, produced in English which I can. I can show and say, well, look, th this is what I did and this is what I'm capable, I can do this. That's really amazing stuff. Thank you so much for that, Katharina. Um, uh, I'll get you to stick around. I'm going to mute myself now. Uh, Andrew and Jody, the floor is yours, homies. Hi. Wow, Katharina, what an amazing outcome for you. It's so fantastic. I love that all that stuff. <laughs> I feel really proud and happy. Yeah. You kept me on track too. <laughs> Uh, it's so fantastic. Congratulations, uh, Katarina. And um, yeah, I think that's probably a good introduction to uh, for a couple of people who've joined tonight who uh, are wondering and thinking about applying to the NFDS uh, for 2019. Uh, of course, you also won the CBAA award last year uh, on the Gold Coast at a ceremony. So uh, there was a good kudos there. Um, you're also one of eight uh, documentaries and producers uh, from last year's series. And it's probably uh, at this stage a good overview for uh, people who are uh, thinking about, um, you know, applying to the NFDS that as much as it's a training and a mentoring and distribution, um, you know, kind of opportunity, it's, uh, there's a lot of marketing uh, to really get your piece out there uh, that, you know, otherwise uh, can't really be offered uh, on, on kind of around the clock, uh, at least through the community radio network. But it is a pretty rare thing within uh, community radio itself that there's a really uh, big variety, lot, large geographic spread of a lot of uh, different producers all putting their works together at a central point for, for listeners uh, to tune in anywhere around the world. So, um, yeah, thank you so much, Katarina. Uh, if you're going to stick around and you'll... Some of this might be familiar for you from last year. Um, but uh, just to reintroduce myself, I'm Andrew McClellan. Uh, I'm the operations coordinator for the Community Radio Network. Um, it's a syndication uh, service for programming and content uh, based at the CBAA. 
and uh, I work with Jordana each year on the National Futures and Documentary series, at least for the last couple of years. If you're completely new uh, to the NFDS and you're not sure what it's about, um, well, uh, the NFDS was uh, created uh, to encourage storytelling from new and emerging producers based at community radio stations around Australia. So it's gone, been going since 2014. Uh, in 2013, uh, there was the inaugural National Features and Documentary Competition. Uh, so it became series the next year. And it's uh, kind of suited to anyone who has a great idea for a radio feature but uh, needs some help in planning and production and pulling it together, just all the points that uh, Katarina uh, touched on there. Um, one of the great uh, elements and opportunities that comes with the NFDS is that you actually get paired with a personal mentor and you're with that mentor for the year and that mentor is uh, kind of acts like a supervising producer for your documentary. And... Uh, you know, a lot of consideration goes into who that mentor is and how they work with you uh, on, on the round year uh, basis. But while Jordana and I uh, are kind of here as uh, kind of executive producers, if you will, uh, you're the producer and then you're working with a mentor that's one-on-one -on -one and they're the supervising producer throughout the year. Uh, I should also give a shout out here to the Community Broadcasting Foundation that uh, make this uh, financially possible uh, on a year-to-year -year basis. So big shout out to the CBF. If you haven't already, it's a good idea if you're thinking about putting an application in to go to nfds.org.au and listen back to a few of the previous year's features. Um, not only to see if your idea has already been done, but also to get an idea of, uh, oh, this is uh, what's already out there. I think I could do better than this, or this really inspires me, or whatever it might be. It's, uh, it's a good chance to get familiar with um, the, the series before you apply. Um, really, all you need is an idea. You put that idea in an application form. We're going to go through the application form tonight so you can understand how you put your best foot forward and make a good argument, if you will, uh, a good pitch into the application form. Uh, and with the wonderful Jordana and the CMTO here, uh, all the training and, uh, and mentoring kind of turns your idea into something of a concrete uh, possibility. Uh, of course, you have to put in a lot of work, it's fair to say, they're not gonna uh, do it all for you. Uh, but you do receive uh, personal training and mentoring uh, approximately to the value of $1,000. Uh, in addition to that uh, training and mentoring, you, there is also uh, honorary payment uh, for your audio. It's uh, roughly about $30 uh, per minute for a 24 minute 50 piece. So just 10 seconds under 25 minutes is the total run time of uh, a piece for the NFDS. Um, I think at this stage, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Jordana, and uh, Jordana's going to go through a bit of what makes a good story. Uh, this is important when uh, considering what application you're going to put in. Yeah, so we've got lots and lots of um, stories, I guess, that we want to tell, but when it comes to National Features and Documentary Series, there's some really specific things that we're looking for in a story and what makes a good story for this kind of format. Um, we really want you to have a chance to create quality productions that are of a national broadcast standard. And I think if you go and listen to any of the past winners and indeed any of the other ones that have been made since 2013 on nfds.org, you'll really start to get an idea of the standard that we're looking at. I mean, Katarina's just blew people out of the water. Her standard was incredible. And uh, she hadn't worked on that kind of project before. So it's really a chance to, to tell a story um, in a new way that you probably don't get a chance to um, within your radio stations at the moment. Um, so basically the good, this kind of story we're looking for is something that captures attention, holds on to it, gives someone something they haven't heard before, but also gives people time to absorb the information. So if you're thinking about um, features or podcasts and the way in which audio, music and sound all relate to each other. It's the total package. And that's why it's different to a standard radio interview or a panel or something like that that we might normally hear or that we might normally do on our programming. Because um, documentaries and features aren't just one single person talking. They could be one profile of a person, but generally there's lots of other elements brought in. There's things like narration, there's sound effects, there's music, a whole bunch of things. I think one of the interesting things is when you listen to a few of the ones that have happened throughout the year, Katarina's is a good one, 
there is actually no scripted narration throughout it. So there's been a lot of work going into the way that it's been structured so that the whole story can be told by the voices of the people in the story. Really incredible skill to, to learn. Um, so yeah, lots of different aspects that go into what makes a good story. I put a few of them up on the screen there and a couple of examples there too um, that you might want to listen to um, as some of the really top-notch storytelling pieces that we had. I think one of the other things too is if some of those words on the paper there, on the screen there, are causing you a little bit of anxiety, things like dramatic arc and narrative voice. The whole idea of the training that the Community Media Training Organisation does throughout this project is to actually teach you about some of those skills. Um, so we give you a bit of knowledge, we also give you um, lots of examples so that you can actually have um, some background to what you're going to end up doing yourself. So we don't just throw you in the deep end and go, go figure out your dramatic arc. We actually walk it through with you so that you know um, how that all works. Hmm. And uh, thanks for that, Jordana. Um, from here, I want to touch on the selection criteria for the application form. So if you have already had a look at the application form, uh, you'll see that this is uh, how applications are kind of viewed uh, when they're coming in and we're seeing which applications have the strongest kind of demonstration that they're a viable project and the producer's committed to undertaking it and putting the work in that's required through that year. Uh, so the first thing, of course, is thoroughness of planning demonstrated in, in the application. Uh, one of the things we look for here is, uh, is this can you produce this between May and August? That's the kind of production timeline. Uh, you actually have to have most of your recording done uh, by that kind of July window and from there you're editing. So if uh, something is clear in your application that that's not gonna be possible, then uh, you know that, that might be a bit of a red flag, but uh, we're also here to kind of workshop what that could be before you uh, put your application in. It's also uh, planning can be uh, demonstrated by um, kind of being very specific with the people you're going to interview. So instead of saying, I'm going to interview a community member or I'm going to uh, interview a tradie who I, who I see around, um, that might not be strong enough. Can you give us a name? Can you give us an indication of uh, who this person is and if, they, if you know that they want to talk to you or um, how you're going to go about engaging that person if they're uh, not, not yet an acquaintance of yours. Uh, giving a name is always the strongest way forward. We admit that can't happen all the time, but if uh, all the characters of your story in your application form are just kind of uh, vague descriptions of the type of person you want to interview, it's not going to be the strongest application. Uh, the second criteria is the originality of the idea of the story. Uh, this is uh, pretty straightforward in a way. Has your story or topic been covered before? In many ways, like uh, uh, with a lot of the stories in current affairs that, uh, you know, are floating around in, um, in our media all the time, uh, someone has probably touched on your topic at some time. Think about what your angle is. Is there like a personal anecdote or a personal uh, kind of response to that story that you have? Is there an event that brings it to your local area? Is there uh, an angle that just hasn't been explored or you think underexplored? And, and how will you kind of set out, um, uh, you know, achieving that and bringing that to the fore in your documentary? Oops, sorry. No, I've lost that there. Oh, fantastic. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Jordana. <laughs> Uh, so potential uh, for creative use of sound. So as Jordana was touching on before, these aren't just straight uh, one person interviews uh, backwards and forwards. That's not really what a feature or documentary is. And it's, all, it's almost like a lost opportunity to be part of this course and just to come out with this single kind of standard interview. Of course, you can use a single standard, uh, a single interview, but there needs to be creative elements in that. So is there going to be sound? Is there going to be music? What, what's the story that you want to tell? Um, what will your feature be doing that you haven't been able to do in your uh, career in community radio so far? And we don't want you to feel like this uh, puts a lot of pressure on you if you don't feel technically savvy. Even if you don't feel that you've uh, done a lot of technical production before and worked with a lot of different sound elements like ble bleeding into each other, um, just give us a description of what you want it to sound like, what you think those things sound like. So I might hear my interviewee kind of standing on the cliff and it's uh, relevant to the story and I can hear the wind and the grass blowing around. And You know, giving uh, us a bit of an idea of 
of um, what you want it to kind of sound like and what you think it will sound like as you, you know, carry out the production through the year. Uh, the next criterion is uh, suitability for national broadcasting distribution as a 24 minute 50 uh, second piece. So uh, this uh, seems quite straightforward and it can be. Uh, really what it's about is making sure that if you're producing your feature in Melbourne, it's still gonna be relevant potentially or of interest to a listener in Broome. So if your uh, piece is too locally focused or it speaks just to the local area or it uh, kind of has another kind of element to it which doesn't really make it a kind of broadly accessible thing for a general audience, then you have to kind of workshop that. And in most cases, there is a way to be telling that story that keeps it relevant to people listening across the continent and perhaps potentially even the globe. And again, we're happy to workshop that one if uh, you want to get in touch with uh, CMTO or CRN and talk about your idea in advance. Uh, and then the final criterion is variety of content across the series. Um, oh, sorry, the other uh, criterion, just for no, no. Sorry. <laughs> for suitability uh, for national distribution, um, we need to make sure that your topic or your feature isn't going to date within a couple of weeks after distribution. Can this be relevant in a year's time? Say, for example, if I was doing uh, an interview on a, a breaking story or something that's in the uh, current of, uh, in, in the news media at the moment, um, am I kind of producing a story that's going to fall out of date within a, a couple of months as that develops? Uh, and in some cases that might be happening, but there's also ways to kind of mitigate that and think about your topic and broaden it so that uh, you don't end up with something that seems out of date within a couple of months time. Uh, and variety of content across the series. So besides all the above, uh, we consider applications in terms of uh, the range of finished works that there's gonna be across the series. So what are those eight final works for this year gonna be? But also uh, has this topic been covered in previous years? So the Simple answer there is to see what's already being produced. You might think, oh yeah, this topic has been covered before, but definitely not in, uh, from my angle uh, whatsoever. And uh, you can make that argument in your application form. So we do need a mix of different topics. We need styles. This is also you know, a national uh, uh, you know, series. So it does need to, uh, we do need to include people from across the continent and uh, people walking different uh, walks of life and coming from different experiences. So uh, that's also something that is, uh, you know, is used in the appraisal of applications as they come in. Uh, so the easiest way to answer that one is to uh, think about your idea, uh, see what's been produced in the past and just think about oh, how am I going to make uh, a piece of radio that's relevant for people across the continent? Excellent. Cool. Um, so, uh, without further ado, we might take a quick look at the application form. Can we click on that link there, Jordana? One here? Um, that Oops. one there. Oops. Let me go back there. Okay. Hopefully it'll bring it up. I think okay. it will because it likes us, right? Likes hey. Us. Hopefully everyone can see that. Hang on. I'll just... Um Zoom the share there. Yeah. Let me just bring it up for you. There we go. Fantastic. So if you haven't seen this yet, this is the application form for 2019. Uh, all those criterion, uh, criteria, I should say, are there, uh, so you can check it out. We've also created a couple of extra resources uh, for applicants this year. So we have uh, tips and tricks for your application. Uh, it's just a one-page document. Uh, we'll go through that in a bit. We also have a good example of an application from last year. Uh, so you could check that out. And of course, we've got a link to last year's content if you haven't got the hint yet. Um, so uh, the, we collect uh, some basic information just about yourself and uh, the idea for your feature. Um, again, you need to be based at a community radio station to be eligible for the National Features and Documentary Series. So we do need to get uh, a name and a contact of someone at your station that can say, yes, I know this person, we endorse uh, their project. That's really important uh, that you are based at, at, and that this feature is coming from uh, your local community station. Um, we uh, ask a couple of uh, questions uh, about uh, the types of people who are applying for the NFDS. We also ask if you need any special assistance 
uh, for the NFDS. This could be a range of things. It might be that you are someone that lives with uh, impaired vision. It might be that you are seeking a culturally appropriate mentor uh, or you have someone in mind. And we actually give you a chance to nominate um, a mentor uh, that you might want to be working with uh, this year. Um, we ask a little bit just about your technical experience when it comes to radio and working with audio. And then uh, we get into like the heart and crux of your idea and the characters and the contacts and who you're going to interview and what's going to happen if things don't come together the, the way you dreamed and how you want it to sound and everything like that. Uh, one little thing that we then ask for is uh, just what inspires you in terms of radio or audio. What podcasts are you listening to? What broadcasts are you listening to? Is there a particular show or can you link us to a particular podcast that you've really enjoyed and you think, uh, I just love the way that this is put together. I want to keep this in the back of my mind as I produce my feature this year. So uh, that's the application form. If you have any questions about it, uh, get in touch with us, of course. And uh, there's also, uh, really importantly, just the, uh, your ability to commit to the year and to the course. So again, it's uh, really that May to August kind of period in which there's quite an intense amount of production that goes on. There's fortnightly webinars for the start and then you're really into your production and you're meeting up with your mentor and you probably are spending a minimum of like three hours every week absolute minimum on it and I think as Katarina might uh, point out you spend a lot more than three hours a week on it towards the end uh, yeah. but that's the application form there uh, sorry Jordana can we go back to the other slide Slideshow. yeah but if I quick say, guys, I, I really like the webinars every second week. It, it gave me a good routine where I have to be at, where I'm not at and what I need to do to get there. And that was really, um, really great because you set the webinars up like this is what you need to do in the upcoming two weeks. And then you have to deliver this. And it gave you really good overview and, and broke those really big tasks of producing a 25 minute piece down in manageable steps. Fantastic. Yeah, and that's what the course is about. It's uh, uh, instead of seeing it as just like this huge behemoth that needs to be dealt with all at once, it's broken into like small areas and uh, small aspects that can be dealt with on a, a fortnightly level and keep you up to date and, you know, see all those red flags before it gets too late in the piece. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to hand over to you, Jordan. All righty. So I can see a few questions are coming through. Keep them coming and we'll come to you at the end uh, or towards the end of the session and we'll answer those questions. So please pop them in the chat box. It's great to see um, uh, so many of you from all over the country here tonight as well. So thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to tell your friends at your community radio station too um, to uh, get involved in this and put in their own pitch you can even put in a pitch as a team, actually. So um, we've had a few teams come through um, NFDS in the past. So um, let's talk a little bit about the pitch and how you might go about preparing the pitch. And when we're talking about the pitch, we're kind of talking about your application in a way because yeah. that's all we're going to get to start off with. We're going to hear your voice through what you've written in that application. So essentially we want your, whatever you write into that application, it should be inspiring. It should inspire Andrew and I and uh, the other people who are going to be part of the selection process to think that will be a really exciting story and it's something that the CRN audience will really want to hear. So you're going to got to tell the story of your story. Um, and you've got to think about how it might be original or interesting to a stranger. Um, you also need to convince us that you've got the skills to be able to make the program. Now, you might not have the best technical skills in the world when it comes to editing and interviewing. You'll get there. You'll have those. But what we want to know is do you have the kind of the base skills, the passion, um, the ability to contact people um, and those sorts of things to actually to go ahead and make the program. Most importantly, the thing that you need to do this will be time. Um, and uh, you also need to create some idea, um, some, some interest in the story that you're posing to us. So kind of tell us a little about why it would be interesting to a wider audience. Um, is it something tapping into the zeitgeist of today, those sorts of things, which is really important. I wanted to pick up on something before, Andrew, is that I was actually trolling back through a lot of our um, a lot of the docos that had been made in the past and was noting that 
a lot of the docos in the past had actually broken stories that hadn't made it to the mainstream yeah. media yet. Yeah. And they were stories that perhaps were a little bit on the margin. They were, uh, I can think of the ketamine one was a really good one, an example mm. of that. Um, the kind of stories about that we had about um, uh, Indigenous children in foster care, those stories were really on the margin. And what happened is they, um, the producers knew because they were out in the communities like all of you are, Create, uh, you know, hearing those stories and bringing them to a much wider audience. And I actually checked through and looked at mainstream media coverage of some of those issues and realised that it hadn't really exploded until after our stories had come out. So it's a really good chance um, to create interest around a story that perhaps is about your community or something happening in your community that hasn't got a national platform yet. So in terms of that, that's uh, the... Um, the way to go about doing your pitch. Um, you want to develop the idea as, as you know, extensively as you can before you start entering information into that. And part of that is looking at what problems you might um, face, what barriers you anticipate in telling the story. I think that that's a really important part because we want to know that you've kind of thought through how this is actually going to play out for you. Okay, so talking a little bit about the elements of your pitch or your application. Um, so there's a number of um, elements here. So what is the story idea to begin with? And why would it make a good radio program for the intended audience? We start to talk about whose voices will be heard and why. So that's all the voices in the story, who you're going to talk to, who you're going to interview, why are you speaking to those specific people and not other people? Um, and, you know, there's all sorts of reasons in community radio why we talk to the people we talk to. What about your voice? Will your voice be included as well? What kind of narration do you think you'll have in the story? So you want to spend a lot of time really thinking and dreaming and, and listening to other pieces as well and thinking, Will my, do I want mine to be framed in that kind of way? Um, do I want to do something totally different? And I think the cool thing is there's some really creative pieces that were made in the past where they just did not go down the simple narration interview narration interview they went way off that and did some incredible stuff with sound design music location recordings really really fun stuff it's a, totally a time for you to play around with format another thing to really think about and we've had some trip ups in the past on this and what costs might be involved in the production of this so Keep in mind that you're only paid a very honorary payment for it um, and that payment comes at the end. So if you have a travel, um, if you have equipment, those sorts of things that you think are going to have to be involved, you'll need to factor those in along the way. Um, we do supply equipment for you. Um, CMTO can give you, uh, can hire, not hire out, you can borrow out equipment from the CMTO, so you don't need to worry about those things too much. It's just about whether, you know, if you say, I have to go to Iceland to do this recording, that might not work. <laughs> um, pl please tell us about your experience in radio production because we are really needing to know that so we know how to get your mentor um, and match you up with the right mentor and then also um, what training we're going to have to give you to, get, to bring you up to the standard that we need. Um, tell us about what's inspiring you, as Andrew said. That's always a fun one for us when we listen yeah. to see what people have put as their inspiration. And um, so I'd suggest thinking through these elements before you write your pitch. One good thing might be to do is actually, I don't know, can you download the pitch form as it's as a, a Word doc or anything, Andrew? Uh, no. no, that's okay. Yeah. You can just jump onto that website, take a screenshot, copy and paste, whatever, and just, you know, write it out yourself or put it into a Word document before you actually put it into the online form. Mm -hmm. um, I think doing a draft beforehand, maybe some, having someone have a bit of a read over it. You could even ask us for some ideas. We're totally open to that before you put your pitch in because you want your pitch to be as refined as possible before it goes in um, and you don't want to waste that opportunity. Um, so yeah, just talk, talking a little bit about writing that pitch. I think one of the, we do talk about pitch writing in the course so that people can refine their ideas a little bit more. And it really is talking, talking about this. But um, you might want to go away and before you look at the application, have a think about these things that are on the screen and um, write down a few notes or, you know, take a couple of notations into your phone about this. But the idea is that you're telling it as a story. So Tell us how you're going to tell the story. We need it to be clear and logical because we don't know what you're thinking. So um, don't assume that there's any 
any knowledge from us, so suggest stuff to us. Um, we want to know how it will sound. We want you to sell yourself a little bit. And the other important thing is really try to avoid being vague. I mean, Katarina's was excellent because she had in her pitch that she was going to talk to this specific group. She had two specific characters that she was going to speak to. Um, she had a couple of other contacts like, we want to know names. We want to know that you've actually got some kind of connection or potential connection with the people that you're going to be speaking to. So um, don't be vague. Give us specifics um, as much as you possibly can in relation to that. Cool. Yeah, and so just on, um, uh, I'll, I'll take over from here. Thanks, yeah. Jordana. Just on what Jordana uh, was talking about, uh, the tips and tricks, uh, uh, doc that uh, pointed out earlier it's also linked on the application form there and we'll be sending it out after this uh, webinar it's just a nice one pager uh, just to kind of think about uh, some of these key points here if you like it's a bit of do's and don'ts or like tips and avoids if you will um, so just as Jordana was uh, kind of talking about a bit earlier you want to find an entry point into your subject so rather than starting with the big picture are you able to like give us an anecdote, an idea, an experience, or a story, because this is kind of a launch pad. When you think about uh, a lot of documentaries, uh, if they're kind of handled well, they really start to engage you with a very specific story before they step out and look at the, the wider subject. So what is that story? Is there a way you can kind of frame it? And often, uh, that'll probably be you know, the key lens for the, the topic itself, and the entire feature. So avoid starting your application with a massive uh, topic because it makes it hard for us to imagine what this is actually going to sound like if you just say I'm going to be looking at you know med medical marijuana uh, and medicinal uh, marijuana as an example. So what are you actually looking for in there? Is there like do you have characters? Is there are you, do you want to be hearing from families and how they're affected, or do you want to be looking at how it's actually playing out in the courts at the moment? Like what, what's your uh, what's your angle there? Uh, the next point is, um, whoop, need to hit it a couple of times. Uh, again, telling us the exact people you want to interview or who the characters of your feature are going to be. Uh, so if you can't give us a name, uh, can you describe the precise person who you're going to interview or tell us how you're going to get access to them, how you plan on getting this person for your interview? Again, we don't want to, it's hard for us to uh, see that good planning is in place or that it's a really viable production if you kind of say, I want to just find the person on the street that might be able to talk about this or I want to just talk to a tradie about this or I want to find an affected community member who's in the area how are you going to get those people maybe you already know them maybe you can actually uh, say that well I you know volunteer at this area and I can speak to this person or I, I know a tradie their name's this and they work on the end of the street and I've spoken to them you know you can be kind of honest and transparent in your application like that so just avoid giving a general description of the sort of person you want to interview if you can give a name you're comfortable giving a name Give us a name. Give us an indication that you're able to be creative with the audio. So, you know, we've visited this point a couple of uh, times tonight. Uh, with the NFDS, it's not really about um, uh, doing a single interview or just being in the this radio studio as you would on air, uh, talking to someone for half an hour. It's a chance to be creative with audio. So you might have one interview, but what are all the elements that are going to make that into a feature, an actual documentary? How are you going to kind of, uh, what, what do you hear going on in it? Um, you should avoid basing your application entirely on existing or archival audio. Uh, there was a question there about uh, if we've already done some interviews on the topic, is that okay? That was from Rachel. Rachel, yes, that's completely fine, but we do need to get an idea that still during the course, you're gonna have good ample opportunity to be uh, recording more audio. Uh, because we also touch on interview techniques uh, throughout the course. Uh, you'll also be wanting to draft your uh, questions with your mentor and sitting through it because there's a lot of planning that goes in before the recording stage and that's what NFDS is about. So uh, it's great that you might have some existing audio, uh, but we still need to get an indication that you're going to be able to uh, make the most of your time and make the most of the course uh, to still be making uh, recordings after you've got undergone some training and mentoring on what that is. 
Okay, number four, um, consider if your feature can be produced between May and July this year. That's a big one. Uh, so, sometimes there might be an event or something that sits outside of that window, which you think is uh, really important for your feature. So obviously, if uh, your feature is all about something that happens in October, it's probably not going to work for the NFDS. But, you know, if, if that was your plan, give us a call. There might be another way to approach that topic. In, in, in any case, like, uh, you should avoid submitting an idea that rests on you taking a microphone to a single event and getting everything from that single day. That can be a very tr tricky and kind of risk-based version of production. And of course, we ask in the application form, if you can't do this or the person falls through, how are you going to still get this story together? How are you going to produce your future? So you need to think about a backup. Mm -hmm. Uh, be honest in your application form. This is uh, really about it. We've got so many people of different levels of experience, different ages from different locations. Uh, you shouldn't have to uh, feel that this is such a, a massive thing if you feel technically non-proficient when it comes to editing audio or something like that. While you are going to be editing audio, you're, you, we're going to be giving you assistance and mentoring to be able to get through that. So first and foremost, we just need to hear your ideas and that you're interested and that you want to be part of the NFDS. Be transparent and honest in your application form and then if it's a strong idea, then you know it needs to get up in some way or another. And uh, the other thing about NFDS is it should be the first time that you've done something of the scale, and that's the case for everyone. Uh, if, you've, if you've already produced like massive documentaries and features, then maybe uh, you won't get too much out of this course, uh, but uh, for virtually all uh, participants that have come through uh, NFDS in the past, this is the biggest idea that they've had to that date, and then it's only bigger from there, of course. Mm, it's, yeah. your, it's your chance to do this. We don't get the chance to do this in community radio very often. That's absolutely right. Um, so just on uh, that kind of do's and don'ts or tips and tricks there, I thought we could just look at a sample application form. So this was from last year, uh, th and this was a really strong application form that actually, uh, you know, touched on a lot of the points that we raised there. This was from Nicola Van de Wettering. Uh, her documentary was called At the Coalface. She's based in uh, Brisbane at 4 Z, but this was about her hometown of Kingaroy, which is a, uh, a small rural uh, Queensland town, and it was about all, all the... Uh, tensions within the community around um, underground coal gasification and coal mining and uh, kind of the mining lobbying industry in that local area. But let's just have a look at how she actually started describing the, uh, the, the feature and what she wanted to do. So remember we were talking about like jumping off points or providing a, a little narrative. So Nicola could have said here, um, you know, I want to explore, uh, you know, Queensland and the mining industry when it comes to uh, local communities. That's kind of, that's a topic, but that's not really a jumping off point. That's not really a story. The story is the rural Queensland town of Kingaroy and its surrounding communities are quite a cultural anomaly. The hometown uh, of notorious ex-premier Joe Elka Peterson, one of the few electorates in Australia to survey a majority against same-sex marriage, and in the last federal election, the highest first preference count for a one-nation candidate in Australia. And yet, she's hooked us in. We're hooked in already. Yeah. And so we, we have the setting, we have an idea, but then here comes the, the problem or here comes the hook. And yet this hyper-conservative township is home to one of the strongest and most successful grassroots environmental movements in Australia, critical to the ban of underground coal gasification. So we have uh, kind of a, a really strong idea of what, it, what the topic is, uh, what the story is, where Nicola wants to be taking us. And then we also have her own personal narrative in there. When I was 15 years old living on a property near Kingaroy, a geologist knocked on our door to ex, uh, explain the exploration for coal use for U UCG occurring right underneath our feet. And so then we know what her voice is and where she wants to be in it. This is just a little excerpt of uh, her answer to the first question. Uh, again, uh, the full example is uh, available and uh, we'll be sending that out after the webinar. Didn't she say something about peanuts in the full example? Uh, yes. So yeah. there's <laughs> really, a, like immediately when I read <clears throat> this interesting yeah. little factoid that yeah. I already knew about King Roy, but as soon as I read yeah. that, I was like, yeah, loving this story. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, so Kingaroy was, yeah, a, a peanut farming community and Joe Elke Peterson. Joe B. Elke Peterson. Joe B. Elke Peterson was uh, 
notorious uh, peanut farmer come uh, premiere of Queensland. So she painted this scene for us yeah. and she <laughs> tied it into a very big issue in Australia and particularly something that's covered quite often by community radio, which is mm. environmental issues. But then she brought it back to a personal a personal mm. as aspect as well. And for me, it just really sung. You were just like, yeah, cool. Yeah. I want to hear what Nicola's got to say about this. And, and you should uh, all give it a listen. If uh, if this is of interest to you, it's incredible how Nicola actually handled uh, a lot of the competing voices and issues. I mean, there's quite heated tensions in the community, as you can probably imagine, when it comes to uh, uh, these issues and uh, the, the different perspectives that everyone has. And there's... Uh, the actual crux of the story isn't here. I think she kind of decided it uh, afterwards during uh, the production. It all came down to a billboard, which was pro-mining, pro-coal pro, uh, mining uh, within the area, but uh, no one knew where the billboard had come from, if it was the mining lobby or if it was uh, uh, another company. And it's kind of, the story is almost going through the half an hour until Nicola actually gets uh, the person who put up the billboard on the phone and there's the conversation there. And it's a real hook. It's a really mm -hmm. amazing point where you, it kind of sums up all the different perspectives that are within the community and then the, the great mystery is kind of solved. Who put up this pro-mining billboard? Mm, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, the next point, we just want to have a look at uh, the main characters and voices of the story. We're focusing on these two questions. I think these are like the two key questions mm. if you can uh, pitch your story and then show your planning within these two questions, half your work is done easily. Uh, so this is what Nicola had to say, who are the main characters and voices of your story? She says off the bat, I'm gonna act as a narrator. I want to interview three principal voices. Who are those voices? Well, they're local community, but they are represented by this specific family. They're my neighbors and family friends. They're farmers, this is why I want to interview them. I want to interview government and research professor, uh, professionals. Uh, here's uh, Professor Jonah Stirl, uh, colleague and research supervisor. These are her credentials. Uh, and then operators represented by this person, uh, coal geologist, acting manager at the Kingaroy Aquifier. We get a really clear idea that Nicola knows who it is that she wants to be speaking to. She knows how she wants to tell the story. She knows what she's going to be doing through the year because ultimately you still need to be, you know, setting up your interviews and pulling it together. And uh, if, if Nicola left these uh, answers as, well, I want to interview people from the local community, I want to interview someone from government and I want to interview an operator within the mining industry, that wouldn't give us a clear idea that all that work was there and that she could actually carry it out. But, uh, you know, there's enough detail here and there's names as well that tells us, okay, cool, this, this is really viable, there's planning here, this has wings, seriously. She, she's, she knows who's who in the um, story that she wants to talk, wants to do. But um, it's also, I think, quite obvious that this is something that she's been ruminating about for a while. Yes. Yeah, and I think that that's probably where a lot of the good stories have come from. Yeah. Where people have had, you know, a bit of a passion or an interest in something, perhaps a personal connection in some ways, and it's a story that they are a little bit embedded in and they, this is their chance to tell it. Mm, exactly. Um, so I think that's uh, about it for us and uh, for the National Features and Documentary Series, the kind of whys and how-tos to apply. Um, we just got a couple of other questions here that we might answer in just one sec. Uh, we'll just, uh, again, uh, reaffirm that we're going to be sending some resources out including tips and tricks for your application and uh, a good example of the application that we just looked at there, but in its full form. Um, of course, if you want to workshop your idea, uh, we're here. Uh, you can get me on crn at cbaa.org.au or just give the CBAA a call. And uh, that's the same for you, Jordan. Yeah, you can give um, CMTO a call or you can email probably best to email info at cmto.org.au rather than me trying to remember how to spell my name. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Danny will send uh, those uh, two out shortly, I'm sure. Um, so, uh, Danny, we might just answer some of the questions here if that's all right. No worries at all. Please go right ahead. Do you, uh, so, you obviously, you're seeing the ones in the Q&A as also as the webinar chat? Yes, yes, we have. So just the one in the Q&A there. Do I have to get copyright clearance for all sound effects? 
Uh, well, it depends where you're sourcing those sound effects from. So there are such things as royalty-free sound effects. Uh, if something is under copyright, um, you uh, may need to get permission from that copyright holder. Uh, when it comes to commercial music, however, uh, this uh, feature has been primarily designed for radio, but there are issues when we try and podcast copyrighted music. So even if it's your friend's band, if your friend's band had a, uh, uh, an album uh, go out on a, on a major label, for example, uh, and you try to include that music, it might be that some of the podcast catches actually catch up on uh, copyright infringement. That's something that we can't do too much about, and we'd hate to see your feature kind of suffer by being taken down for copyright infringement by kind of automatic algorithms that live on podcasting sites. So uh, in, in essence, um, copyright is something that we visit over the year and we uh, work with all those issues on a case-to-case -case basis. Mm. So Yeah, so definitely if you've got ideas for sound effects and music and particular music tracks, write them up into your pitch. We want to know what they are. We'll sort out the copyright and those sorts of issues um, as, we, as we get into the details of it. But um, putting that sort of information in your pitch is excellent. It really yeah. gives us a strong idea of what you're thinking about. Hopefully that's answered it for you, Trita. And this is going to see, is there another? Can I use voiceovers for the interviews who cannot speak English? Yeah, no, that's absolutely correct. And, you know, in previous years, um, you, you might want to just use a, a, a voiceover that translates, uh, you know, what the interviewee is saying. Um, but if you go and listen to, I think it was 2017, no, 2016, uh, and it was... Uh, uh, Nancy Lynn's uh, project uh, oh, at yeah. the time. Um, the ghost. Uh, the ghost. Um, uh, uh, hello, yes, no, goodbye. It was about a, uh, a Ouija board. Um, so there's actually an interview with her parents and uh, I, from memory her parents are speaking Cantonese and she doesn't choose to translate everything that they have to say because she's using creative audio to kind of uh, give an impression of what uh, they're saying to an, Eng an English speaking only audience or a non-Cantonese speaking audience. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's creative ways that you can approach the question of, um, you know, translation, voice, voiceovers and the use of multiple languages. Uh, because that's something that we definitely want to encourage because uh, for a lot of our stories, that's, uh, you know, uh, English just isn't going to cut it as like the only language. But uh, how can it be uh, kind of accessible or how will it sound to uh, a primarily English speaking audience mm. is uh, the question to us. Yeah. And actually Mahendra had that in his, yeah. his piece last year. Yeah. Um, uh, what is it called again? Mahendra's piece? It was... Um... Um, Oh, oh man, skipped our minds anyway. Uh, oh, I have it here. You have it there. Uh, it was To Say I Am Home. To Say I Am Home. Yeah. Fantastic use of his grandmother's um, voice uh, speaking in Hindi, I think. And mm. um, he, him kind of like narrating uh, partially over the top of it as well. Um, it was just amazing, really, really incredible work. Um, so Rachel just said, my interviews were part of our usual news stories, but they led me to the idea for this. And that's great, Rachel. I think mm. if you're, if there's something that's, um, you've kind of been working on and it's a story that you've been following for a while and you think actually it needs a bigger platform, that's really, really excellent. And it might be the case that you use some parts of those interviews, um, for this doco, but more than likely you'd go out and re-record some stuff. Yeah. Um, Rec like getting uh, a kind of firm idea from uh, after you've spoken with your mentor, you've undergone a bit of your training, uh, this is what I need to consider when I go out and start recording. It's even things like uh, you might be recording someone in a noisy place, which can be fine. There might be a lot of ambient sound around, but then you need to stick around and get like a good minute of that ambience without any voice in there. And uh, often that's not something that we've kind of considered if uh, we have existing audio. So um, yeah, that needs to be kind of a good and ample opportunity to uh, be making new recordings throughout the year. Yeah. 
Cool. So um, I think that's all the questions that we've got there. If there's anything else, please pop it into the chat box now. If you've even got an idea bubbling away at the moment and you want to run it by us, let us know. Um, it's good to see a few people, a few familiar names in the, in the room there. But what I'd also encourage you to do is really spread it around um, the... Uh, network of your radio station so talk to people about it talk to your um, talk to your mentors or your um, station managers or anyone who you kind of chat and hang out with your co-hosts about some of your ideas um, and get their feedback on them as well mm -hmm. that would be really good I can hear, I can hear um, Harper yes I know I had the I had the mic off there for a little bit but she's just getting a little bit She's uh, very happy and excited at the moment. She had she got a microphone for Christmas, oh. and um, she's been uh, using it um, to have her own little webinar herself. Oh, that's really adorable! Oh, there we go. That's you there, isn't it, Harper? Do you want to tell us? Do you want to yell up your yell out your idea for what your NFDS documentary is going to be about, darling? She just said she wants to go up there. I'll, I'll make sure she puts in a proper proposal before. Okay, it's good. Yeah, good. We need characters. Tell her we need characters. <laughs> I'll let her know about that. Um, thank you so much for that. That was a really wonderful session, you guys. Um, thanks, Danny. Hope, thanks, Katarina. Yes, thanks, Katarina. Thanks, Katarina. Hopefully... We're going to rope you in. I'm going to try and rope you in as a mentor. Uh, <laughs> happy, happy to do that. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see how we go. It all. And the other thing I, we didn't actually mention is that um, we do pair you up with a mentor that you meet with face to face. So um, it's usually somebody who's in your geographical area. So it's a um, really great chance to, I guess, make a new friend as well. <laughs> Um, that was really wonderful. The, the materials and a recording of this evening's webinar will be uh, sent out to all registrants. And, 